All right, boys, it is a weird, weird time right now, but if we're going to take one positive out of all of this mess, it's that you most likely have more time to play GTA Online right now. So I'm going to help you out on your grind, and undoubtedly, one of the best ways to make money in GTA Online right now is through the Casino Heist. So we're going to go over literally everything you need to know about it so that you can make the most money every single time you run it. You guys loved the last time I did a guide like this, but I still see new comments on that video pretty much every day saying, Oh, you didn't mention diamonds. And no, dude, the diamonds weren't out yet when I posted that Jenny upload date far. <laughs> but before we get stuck into it, if this video helps you out at all, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And of course, consider subscribing for more videos like this. And if you need people to run this heist with, that's what our Discord server's for. We've got over 3,000 people over there now. So go over there and make some new friends. That's what it's for. All right, let's get stuck into the video. To start the casino heist, you'll need an arcade. But to be able to buy an arcade, you'll need to go to the big letter L on your map and watch a cutscene with Lester first. After that, you'll be able to start the heist at your arcade once you buy it. The first step in completing the heist will be to scope out the casino. This is pretty simple, you know, just go around the inside and outside of the casino, take photos of the entrances and exits and guards, that sort of stuff. That's pretty self-explanatory. But there's actually two sort of hidden entrances that allow you to take different entrances into the heist. The first one is right here under the racetrack. Just take a photo of this door here. What this is going to allow you to do is enter the heist as security guards in the big con approach. And we'll go over that one a bit more later on, because that one's actually a really, really good approach. And the second hidden entrance is under here in the sewer tunnels. So go down here, take a photo of these bars, and that's going to allow you to get into the casino a lot easier during the aggressive approach. Once you scope those out, you'll never have to do it again. So if you haven't done it, just take a couple minutes and do those first. It'll be worth it in the long run. Next up, we've got to choose an approach and there's three to choose from. First up, you've got the silent and sneaky approach where you sneak in and try to kill all the guards or to sneak past them, get into the vault and get out undetected. The second approach is the big con where you go in as a variety of disguises which we'll go over in a second. And the last one is the aggressive approach where you just go in, all guns blazing, and try and kill everyone, get the money, and get out. The good thing about these is they're all pretty fun. But if we're talking about speed and making the most money possible, there's a pretty clear winner. And that's the big con group sex approach. Like I said, the big con lets you sneak into the casino disguised as a variety of different people. You can sneak in as maintenance workers, pest exterminators, party goers, but the best one is group sec or security workers, basically. And that's why I mentioned the security tunnel entrance before, because you can only go in with the group sex approach if you discover this entrance. Because what you'll have to do after you complete the setups is drive a security van into this tunnel. And from there, dude, it is so easy. You literally just walk up to the vault, steal the money and get out. That's it. If you're doing this approach, I recommend the noose disguise as the exit strategy. That's probably the best one for this approach. And if you're doing that entrance and that exit, it's pretty much impossible to stuff up. I actually did a full walkthrough of this approach, so if you wanted to see that, that'll be in the top right of your screen right now, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. If you don't want to do the big con group sex approach, or you just did it because you can't do the same approach twice, the second one I would recommend is the silent and sneaky approach. Personally, I don't recommend the aggressive approach, and there's two main reasons why. The first is because if you get to the vault undetected, you'll actually get extra time in the vault as a bonus. And obviously more time in the vault is a really important thing because you'll have more time to get all of the money. Obviously you can't get there undetected if you're doing the aggressive approach. So that's the first reason. The second is because every time you get shot while you're carrying money, you're gonna lose some of that money. And if you do the other two approaches, they can be done in complete stealth, which means you'll never get shot at and you'll be able to keep all of your money. Let's talk about who you should hire. If you've done the heist before, you'd know that you need to select a gunman, a driver, and a hacker. And if you're gonna choose to complete the heist in stealth, which as I've said, I recommend doing, I recommend choosing the worst gunman and the worst driver. The reason for that is, firstly, if you're doing it undetected, you're not gonna need fast getaway cars or powerful weapons. And the second reason is they're not gonna take as big of a cut. So again, that means more money for you. As for which weapons and getaway vehicles to actually choose, 
it doesn't really matter. You can get away with using just pistols if you're going to complete the heist in stealth anyway, so obviously that doesn't matter. And the getaway vehicles don't really matter either, because the quickest and easiest way to escape the cops is just to drive down here into the sewers, sit in the sewers for a bit, and you're going to lose the cops. You don't need a fast car for that, you can just use any car. You can actually just steal a car off the street if you really want it. The hacker is where it gets a little bit more interesting. And for every approach, I recommend choosing the best hacker available to you. Paige is going to take a 9% cut and you can only actually unlock her once you own a terabyte. I've seen a lot of people asking about that. And AV is going to take a 10% cut and again, he'll give you even more time in the vault. And you can unlock him by destroying all 50 signal jammers that are scattered around the map. So that will be a little bit of a grind. But if you plan on completing this heist a lot, it's probably something I'd look into. So yeah, the rule of thumb is to just choose the best hacker you've got. Obviously, the more time you have in the vault, the better. That way you can earn a lot more money. So personally, I don't mind paying like an extra 2% just to get the best hacker. The optional setups can be a little bit tricky as well because most of the time you don't have to do all of them. For the most part, I do recommend to do all of them, but there's actually two exceptions to that rule. The first is Duggan Shipments, and I don't really recommend doing this one if you're doing the big con approach. By completing Duggan Shipments, that's going to make the enemies a lot weaker. Basically, they're just going to have less armor, which means you can one-shot them to the head. But if you're doing the big con approach, you don't actually need to kill any enemies at all, so you can get away without doing that one. You can still do it if you wanted to just have that safety net to fall back on, but uh, yeah, you really don't need it. The second one is the power drills, and they can probably be avoided as well. These drills let you drill into the safety deposit boxes in the vault, and you can get a little bit of extra money. Honestly though, if you're doing this heist with just two people, you probably won't even have time to do that anyway, so if you're doing it with two people, yeah, you can avoid this one as well. So how much money can you actually make from the heist? Well, there's a few factors that go into that. The first is, well, it depends on what's inside the vault. There's four possible items that can be inside the vault. The most common is cash, then after that it's artwork, after that it's gold, and then diamonds are the most rare. Cash is gonna pay out just over 2.1 million, artwork will pay out over 2.3, and gold is gonna pay over 2.5. Diamonds are the latest addition to the heist, and they're going to get you over $3.6 million, so obviously that's the best one. If you don't like what your vault contents are, while you're still in the mission where you go out and scope out what's in the vault, you can actually just find a new session before finishing it. That way, when you come back in and do that mission again, you're probably going to get something else. So if you got cash and you wanted something else, just leave the session and do the mission again. Easy. Technically, you could abuse that and just keep doing that over and over until you get diamonds. So if you wanted to do that, sure, give that a go. It would probably take a pretty long time. But hey, man, you do you. If you want to do it, go for it. I should also mention as well that while artwork doesn't pay as much as, you know, diamonds or gold, it's actually a lot easier to do this with two people. And the reason for that is because when you cut out one painting, that's going to take about 18 or 19 seconds. But for gold or diamonds, to get an entire rack of gold or diamonds, that's going to take over 30 seconds. Probably over 35 seconds for most people. So, I don't know. That's a little bonus for artwork. Even though you won't earn as much money, hey, that's something to consider. And actually, let's talk about that. How many people should you complete this heist with? Really, you should never do this heist with more than three people. And in most cases, you should probably only complete it with two. Here's why. The more people you have in your heist, the less money you're gonna get. I don't think I need to explain that too much. You guys can do maths. It's like a pie chart. Less people means you get a bigger slice of the pie. The only time you would want to do it with three people in your heist is if you struggle to collect all the loot in time. And I won't lie, if you're not a good hacker, you probably won't be able to get everything that's inside the vault before the time runs out. Because you've got to keep in mind as well that you need to be out of that vault before the timer hits zero or else you're going to get detected. And obviously, we don't want that. A couple more things you should know. Always sell to the dealer that's furthest away. That way, you're going to get the most money. 
I don't really know why you wouldn't do that, but who knows, maybe someone did. And the last thing I want to go over is the second vault. Yeah, there's actually a second sort of hidden vault that not everyone actually knows about. This one's going to require a little bit of teamwork though. On the ground level floor, you'll see this security room here. Once you clear this room out, one person should go to this desk inside and hold down this red button. That's going to open up this little vault door here, and that's going to allow someone to sneak inside. Grab all of the cash from there, and that's a nice little bonus on top of what you already stole. You can do that before or after you rob the main vault. It's, it's really up to you. So that'll bring us to the end of the video. I know the heist has been out for a while, but like I said, I still get a lot of questions about this sort of stuff, so I thought I'd just make an updated version to sort of clarify a few things that I might have missed out on the first time. So if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. That's going to help this video reach more people like you and help more people out. Consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Make sure you join the Discord. Go over there and find some friends or just go over there and just talk about GTA. I'm in there pretty much every day. So if you want to talk to me, that's probably the best way to do it as well. So make sure you stay safe with what's going on. Stay home. Don't go out and do anything stupid. And I'll see you in the next video. Poise. Favorite color, money green. Paper. I've been on my grind since I was in the seventh grade. Seventh grade. Got my first kid, I was only 17. Seventh. Always a provider for my pack like Wolverines. Go, 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 go. But you won't find me on the mountaintop.